Yo, what is good, YouTube? AJ here. We are back from more Super Mario Galaxy, and I can see right now that today will be the final video for Super Mario Galaxy, uh, for the Galaxy playthrough, because we officially completed everything and got all 120 stars. Now there is actually one more thing. There actually is one more star to get, and it actually involves going to the center of the universe. But in order to get it, stay awake. In order to get it, you actually have to replay the game again as Luigi, and you have to do the final battle against Bowser as Luigi. And apparently, I will be doing that sometime in the future, in 2024. It might be, I might do the playthrough again, but this time as Luigi, or I don't know, I'm not sure. So, just to let you guys know. As for today with the final video. We're actually going to read Rosalina's uh, storybook. So we're going to go ahead and head to her library, which is right here. Yep. And just to give you guys a warning, this story is very, very, very emotional. So I'm actually going to read it. You know, and I'm just hoping I don't freaking choke up here. Because I've choken up since I was I choking up to this as a kid. I choking up when I was a teen, so I don't know how it's going to be, but that's what we're going to do for this part, so let's get right in. Okay, now I should also have every chapter, so I should be good, I hope. Yeah, let us begin. So yeah, make sure you guys have tissue next to you. This is going to be a story. Alright guys, just to let you guys know, the reason why Rosalina isn't here is because right when I came in, it automatically got me right to, <clears throat> it, all, it automatically got me right into the storybook, and it started with chapter 2, and I forgot that I accidentally read chapter 1 while at the beginning of the playthrough, so it didn't let me start over, and also once you get into the storybook, well not get into it, but you're reading it, you can't leave it. From what I would think, but I wasn't able to leave it. So since it started from chapter two, I end up just pressing A like fast just to get over, get through it. But we're gonna go ahead and read it from the beginning. Like I said, this is gonna be very emotional, so have some tissue. And yeah, let's go. Okay, and there's nine chapters to it. So we're going to start with chapter one, The Celestial Duo. Our story begins a very, very long time ago with a young girl. One day, this girl spotted a rusted spaceship holding a small star child. What's your name? Are you lost? The girl asks the star child. I'm Luma, and I'm waiting for Mama. She's coming for me on a comet, said the star child, who had been waiting day and night. Don't worry, I'll wait with you, the little girl promised Luma. At nightfall, the little girl borrowed her father's telescope and peered into the sky. She looked and looked, but she saw nothing. Hours turned into days and then years, but still the sky revealed nothing. Finally, the little girl sighed and said to Luma, If we stay here looking much longer, I'll be an old lady soon. But then she had an idea. Why don't we go out there and find your mother ourselves? The girl and Luma fixed up the rusty spaceship and then the two set sail into the starry sky. And this is how the search for the Celestial Mother began. Chapter 2 Star Bits Days passed with no sight of the comet or even a single planet. Instead, asteroids extended for as far as the eye could see. If I had known it was going to take this long, I would have packed more jam, said the little girl. 
above the rumble of her belly. Before they left, she had packed all the essentials. Telescope, butterfly net, stuffed bunny, bread, milk, jam, and apricot flavored tea. But, I forgot to bring water. At this, Luma burst into gales of laughter and the girl began to pout. As long as I have star bits, I'll be fine, said Luma. Want some? The little girl couldn't stay mad after hearing this. Luma continued to laugh and the girl couldn't help but join in. Alright, maybe just a nibble. Leaning far out of the ship, the pair began to collect star bits with the girl's net. They almost fell out a few times, but they kept on collecting. The star bits tasted like honey. Chapter 3 The Comet A beam of light pierced through the, sky, the ship's window. Thinking it was the morning sun, the girl peered through the window only to find a turquoise blue comet shimmering at her. The little girl shook the sleeping Luma awake and shouted excitedly, We have to get that comet. The pair descended on the comet and found that it was made of ice. They looked high and low, but Luma's mother was nowhere to be found. Exhausted, the little girl sat down with a flop, utterly unable to take another step. Look, peering down at the icy ground where Luma was pointing, the girl suddenly noticed clusters of star bits encased in the ice. Pretty good, huh? Finding star bits is my specialty, said Luma, beaming. There's ice here, but it's so warm. I'll bet there's water here too. The two decided to stay on the comet for a while. Riding the turquoise comet, the pair continued their search for Luma's mother. Chapter 4 The Dream One night, the girl dreamed about her own mother. Where are you going? She asked her mother's retreating back. Without turning, her mother replied, Don't fret, dearest. I'm not going anywhere. I'm always watching over you, like the sun in the day and the moon in the night. A wave of sadness washed over the girl. What about when it rains? And I can't see the sun or the moon. Her mother thought for a moment before responding. I will turn into a star in the clouds and wait for your tears to dry. When she awoke, the girl's face was damp with tears. You have star bits in your eyes, said Luma to the girl. Wiping her face, the girl replied, these are tears not star bits. I'm crying because I'll never see my mother ever again. At this, Luma began to cry too. Mama, oh mama, wow. The pair traveled through the starry skies and though they encountered many other comets, not one of them held Luma's mother. Luma was despondent. Now, now, Luma. The rain clouds won't go away if you keep crying, the girl said, giving Luma a squeeze. I'll give you a present if you stop. The girl closed her eyes and said gently, I'll take care of you. With these words, she felt a small spark in her heart. Chapter 5 Home the kitchen will go here, 
and the library will go over there. The girl said bustily to herself. We'll put the gate here. Ever since the girl took Luma under her care, she's, she'd been bustling about at a feverish pace. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it to make a happy home. It turned out that star bits weren't the only things buried in the ice. There were tools and furniture, unlike any they had ever seen, and the girl used them to build a home. Looking at the completed house, Luma remarked, Don't you think it's awfully big for just the two of us? With a library, bedroom, kitchen, fountain, and gate, it was certainly spacious, but still, something seemed to be missing. If only my father, brother, <clears throat> if only my father, brother, and mother were here, the girl said wistfully. Indeed, the house was too large for its two small residents. That night, Clutching her favorite stuffed bunny close to her heart, the girl fell asleep in the starship. Chapter 6 Friends Then one day, while the girl sat sipping tea, a tiny apricot colored planet appeared on the horizon. From the planet, another Luma of the same color emerged. Do you two know each other? The girl asked the two Lumas gleefully. Despite the girl's excitement, they seemed uneasy. The two Lumas neither drew closer nor backed away from each other. Instead, they just stared. Then, Lum then one Luma broke the silence. My mama. At once, the Africa Luma parroted back, My mama, my mama, my mama, my mama. The two Lumas began to dance around the girl frantically, and neither showed any sign of stopping. The girl was so charmed by this adorable scene that she couldn't help but laugh. And that's when something very strange happened. Suddenly, more Lumas began to pop out from the apricot planet. They were different colors, but they all shouted the same thing. My mama, my mama. The sight of all the shouting Lumas only made the girl laugh harder. What am I going to do with all these children? The Lumas just, start, just stared blankly as she doubled over laughing. I guess we'll have to name each and every one of you. Tomorrow, once she had finished naming them all, she would begin moving all the Lumas into the new house. Chapter 7 The Telescope After seeing their hundredth comment, a sudden thought popped into the girl's head. I wonder if my home planet is still as blue as it was. That's when she remembered her father's telescope. Peeking into the telescope, a tiny blue dot floated into sight. It was smaller than a star bit. How strange. It's so far away, but it feels so close. She twisted the knob of the telescope and the blue dot grew until she could make out a grassy hill dotted with flowers. It seemed very familiar to her. Zooming even closer, a terrace on the hill came into view. I used to go stargazing there when I lived on my home planet. She remembered rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she followed her father up that hill to look at the stars. She remembered how she and her brother were sled down that hill. She remembered having picnics with her mother on that hill 
on bright and windy days and I want to go home I want to go home right now the girl burst into tears and the Lumas didn't know what to do I want to go home I want to go back to my house by the hill I want to see my mother the girl was shouting now her face wet with tears but I know she's not there. I know all along that she wasn't out there in the sky. Because, because she's sleeping under the tree on the hill. The girl's cries echoed through the stars and a hush fell over the area. Chapter 8 The Wish Though usually quite cheery, one day the girl became sad again. Luma drew close and tried to comfort her. Mama, you still have me. And don't be sad about your mama because she's a part of you. That means she's always close by. It's like me. I love star bits because they remind me of my mama. No, no, the girl said, unable to stop the tears. A lonely look flickered across Luma's face, but it was soon replaced by a wide grin. I have an idea. I would transform into a comet, a soaring comet that can carry you all on this journey. With that, Luma trailing bands of white soared high into the sky and just as quickly started to plummet back down. Kaboom, kablam, the ground shook and a, brighter, and a bright light poured out of the crater that the Luma had created. The bands of light twisted together to form a comet tail. And then Luma emerged, reborn as a comet. The girl could scarcely believe her eyes. But how? She kept asking. Our destiny as Lumas is to transform into different things, said a red Luma, who has suddenly appeared. Stars, comets, planets, we can become all of these things. When I grow up, I want to become a star that makes someone special smile, said a green Luma. A blue Luma chimed in. That Luma turned into a real cutie of a comet, didn't he? All of the Lumas together said, no more crying, mama. Thank you, said the girl in a whisper, and she pulled the Lumas close and hugged them. From that day on, star bits no longer fell from the girl's eyes. The comet set forth for the girl's home planet, its long tail blazing proudly behind it. Final Chapter, Family with its many lumas and telescopes, the comet was quite a sight to behold. The girl and the lumas were proud to call it home. At a welcoming party for a new luma, the girl gathered everyone in the kitchen and said in a louder voice than usual, All right, everyone, let's make a cake. A cake sprinkled with star bits, then it will be a star cake. The Lumas excitedly began to gather the ingredients. As she watched the Lumas scurry about, the girl smiled and thought to herself, this is my family now, and I'll stay with them until they're ready to leave the nest. And when they do leave, I'll see them off with a smile. Because that's what makes 
a mother happiest. That night, when the girl lay down to sleep, a soft light enveloped her and reminded her of the blue planet she once called home. But it would be nice to return home once every 100 years to nap in my favorite sleeping nook. The comet carrying the Lumas and the girl continues on its journey to this very day. With more family members in tow, they can be counted. It's said that the comet visits the girl's home planet once every 100 years, its proud white tail glittering in the sky. The end. Oh man. And that's Rosalina's storybook. <clears throat> and like said, this story this story is very was very is very emotional. So I, I did get very emotional at that one part about her mother sleeping under the tree. That's the part that really gets me the most. It made me cry as a kid when I first seen this. It made, it made me still cry when I was a teenager. And it still made me get tears in my eyes now as a grown up. But this is a very good story. This is how you know Nintendo went all out with the whole plot and everything else in Mario games. But here's something I actually realized. Yoshiaki Koizumi, the director of Mario Galaxy, was actually the writer of the storybook. He said that he actually wrote the, sto the story late at night when no one was around. And then he told Shigeru Miyamoto the next day and presented it to him. And Miyamoto was surprised. He and Yoshiaki actually mentions he would like to see the story as a children's book. Personally, I would say yes, because this is a really good story. It's emotional, but it's also really good explaining the whole backstory. Like, like I would say it'll turn out perfect if it, was a, if it was a real story. But yeah, you get every chapter of the storybook, usually when you get uh, stars and grand stars and all like that. So yeah, but you can always read it whenever you want to. Yeah, but I do, I do like the story. It, like I said, it's sad, but it is a really good story, though. Oh, man. Honestly, I still feel pretty emotional. Because also, while I was reading that, I was just imagining this as a live-action movie. Like, it was making me even more. So, I was, that's why I took... I was taking um, a breather while I was reading this. But yeah, but this will be the end for now for the Super Mario Galaxy playthrough. This was a very challenging game playthrough, but it was still fun to play one of the greatest Mario games ever. Like I said, I first noticed this game way back in 2000. Was it 2008 or two? Actually, no, I would say early 2009. But at the time, I didn't own the game, but my cousin did have this game, and I played a bit of it. I think I did one level with Spring Mario, but I wasn't that interested in the game. But it was not until months later I started watching a whole playthrough of the game, and it was challenging. It really was challenging. And then when it got to the Rosalina storybook part, I actually remember I was watching a play. I was up all night one night. Like this was when school was out back in middle school for me in 2010. I was bored and up all night just playing, I don't remember what I was playing, I think I was playing Brawl, but I was actually watching a playthrough of Galaxy, and I remember I got to the part of the storybook sometime around 6 in the morning, and I was literally crying when, I, when you know, I was watching the whole story and reading it, and my grandma was still telling me, what are you crying about, and I told her this story. That's how you know how powerful the story is. A story like that can really get you. And plus, I'm, I could say I'm an emotional guy, so that definitely got me. But I know it got a lot of the gamers when they first read it. Well, if this was a storybook, uh, a real uh, children's storybook, definitely worth getting. 
And like I said, this was a fun run, very challenging. Um, so here's the future thing. So I do want to play this game again as Luigi, because it may make things easier. But I'm not. It's gonna come uh, in 2024, of course. I might make this a. It's gonna be another playthrough again during all the galaxies, but. I'm not sure if I'll do it part by part, you know, give you guys like a 40 minute to one hour video gameplay of the game, or I might make it a live session. I'll think about it though. I might make it a one hour special, little video, but we'll see, you'll, we'll see in the future. I'll give you guys an update the week beforehand, but this will be coming in 2024. But that's gonna wrap up this video. I wanna thank you guys for watching this whole playthrough of Mario Galaxy like I said it was fun challenging and I hate to I hate to end the playthrough but hey you can always play it again if you want to which I definitely would do in the future but if you guys enjoyed this playthrough hit that like button or the comment and subscribe um, you guys got a favorite part what would you say for me I would say my favorite part was definitely I would say definitely the Bowser finale battle like, that battle was pretty tricky, but then it also was a very good battle. Because there's something about battling in space instead of just battling simply in Bowser's castle. That just makes it perfect. So yeah, I, en I enjoyed it. The Bowser battle was fun. But, like I said, there actually is one more star, but it involves Luigi. So we might be, so we're going to try to get that in 2024. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video and my next Let's Play. Peace out, take care, and have an awesome day. Stay safe.